Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course on working with virtual hard disks. This particular module, we're going to dive into the things you'll need to know for your configuring Microsoft Windows 7 exam. We're going to look at creating, deploying, booting, mounting, and updating virtual hard disks. We're going to do some offline updates and offline servicing and some techniques that you can use to keep those up to date. If you've worked with virtualization technologies in the past, you know that working with virtual hard drives is something built into those technologies. You have one big file, and inside that one big file is your entire operating system file structure. All the individual files, all the partitions, they're all part of that one big file. On Windows 7, we've taken that idea of using a virtual hard drive to the next level. But Windows 7 automatically knows as part of the operating system how to use these virtual hard disks. You don't need any additional software. You don't need to download anything additional to make this work. It's something that is already built into Windows 7, but only the Windows 7 Ultimate and the Windows 7 Enterprise versions. These are not the Windows 7 versions for home premium or professional. You have to have the latest, the highest level Windows 7 to be able to use VHDs. But once you've built them, they look and feel like a real hard disk. You can boot from them. You can use them normally. You can read and write to them. You can do anything you'd like. And this is not a virtualized piece of hardware. It is just a hard disk. So the idea of having separate network cards and other pieces really doesn't apply here. We're using existing physical network cards in your computer, existing physical video cards in your computer. The virtualized part of this is just the hard disk, which makes it very, very handy and very easy to use. And one of the nice features about this is you can move it around. It's just a file. Take the entire hard disk, and instead of opening the cover and unscrewing the hard disk and taking it to another computer, you simply copy the file. And now you've moved an entire hard disk from one computer to another. Now, mind you, it's a really, really big file because it's generally the same size as everything that's on that disk or an exact size of everything that you're using for that entire partition. But you are able to move it around, which gives you some flexibility. I'm going to show you how to build a VHD in a couple of different ways. One of the easiest ways is from the disk management that's inside of your computer management capabilities. And it's easy because it's all graphical. It steps you right through. You can see everything on the screen. Very easy to follow. We're going to use that also to be able to attach and detach from the VHD file that we create. But you don't always have the luxury of a graphical user interface. Sometimes all you have is the command line. So we'll also go through how to use disk part to be able to create that VHD right there at the command line. We will be able to also determine where we're going to put that VHD. If you have the capability to put a VHD on a separate physical disk than the operating system that you're currently running, that's a great idea. That way, if you lose the hard drive, if that hard drive has a physical failure, hopefully your second drive in that computer will still be operational. And if your VHD is on that drive, you could simply boot from that drive. You don't always have that luxury. In fact, the scenario we're going to go through is from a sing single workstation with just a single hard drive inside of it. But if you do have the option to move it off to a separate drive, it's not a bad idea. We're also going to use ImageX. Remember ImageX from the things that we did earlier when we were creating and changing some of our Windows image files? That's something that's included in the Win Windows AIK, the Automated Installation Kit. We're going to use that ImageX program to apply one of our existing window image files into a VHD. So we'll build out a completely empty VHD, fill it with something that we've already imaged, and now we've got a bootable operating system that we can use and put on anybody's computer. In our scenario, what I'd like to do is to take one of our laboratory computers and add an additional operating system to it through the use of a VHD. We're going to take a scenario where there might be a morning shift in the lab, an afternoon shift in the lab, and they might want a completely separate operating system to work with. Maybe they're both Windows 7, but we'd like to separate them out so that each shift has their own workspace to work in. We're going to use a VHD file to accomplish this. We'll build a VHD file right on the hard drive of this computer, and we'll tell this computer, as an option, you can boot from this VHD instead of the primary operating system 
system that's already running on the computer. Ideally, you could even have the primary operating system run from a VHD as well. But since this one is already configured with an OS, we'll leave the existing OS in place. We'll simply add another operating system through the use of a VHD. To see how to create a virtual hard disk right here in the operating system, I'm going to go to my control panel. My control panel is set up to view by large icons, which means the administrative tools is right here at the top, and computer management is right there underneath. And inside of the computer management, we have a number of options available. The one most interesting for us right now is the disk management option. Inside of disk management, we can see all of the disks that are on here. We really only have one physical hard drive. It's a 60 gig drive, and all 60 gig pretty much are being taken by our Windows partition. There's the 100 megabyte partition set up as your system recovery partition on this computer, which is pretty normal for Windows 7. We also have a CD-ROM drive, which we will not be using. So what I'd like to do is really create right there on that C drive our new VHD. We can do this pretty easily. From our action pull down menu, you can see there is a Create VHD option. And it takes you right to a dialog box where you can specify where you would like that VHD to be created. And we could even browse out to our hard drive, add a virtual disk file in here. And let's do that right here in our computer. I'm going to go to uh, our computer on the hard drive, the local hard drive. And let's create a new directory here, a new folder that's just for our VHDs. That way we'll keep them separated out and we can track them pretty easily. Let's put it right in there, and we'll call this really our test. We're going to use a different VHD that we'll create at the, at the command line for what we're going to do later on. We're going to build that new operating system out. And the virtual hard disk size here, just for testing purposes, you can see you can create one that's 100 megabytes. Now you have a couple of options here. You can create one that is dynamically expanding, which means it will only be the size that it needs to be to contain all the files that are within it. Even if we're saying that the entire partition, this hard drive that we're creating is really going to be a hard drive of 2 gig, you can create it and start it so that it's very, very small. One of the dangers here is that if you're on a system like this one where the hard drive gets filled up by one group of folks, you could restrict and create problems if this dynamically expanding drive finds there's no more room to expand with. And that's why recommended is that we create it as a fixed size, which means when we create this virtual hard disk, it will be exactly the size that we are putting up here. It will use up a lot of disk space, even though you don't have many files in it to begin with. But at least you'll know that you'll be able to always fit files into that spot. Let's click OK, and it's going to build out for us that disk. There it is. It hasn't been formatted. Nothing has happened with this drive. We can see that a disk has been added to the system, and it works and reacts just like a normal disk. As you can see, it's created for us a disk right here, but nothing's been done to this disk. This is as if you were to purchase a brand new hard drive in a store and install it into your computer, and it doesn't recognize it. It's not formatted. There's nothing on here. I can right mouse click on disk one and initialize the disk. And these are the things that you would expect to see if you are working with a brand new hard drive. I'm going to click OK. And it says that this disk has been unallocated. I can create a new simple volume. I can partition this disk. And we'll create the maximum size. And we'll assign it the next drive letter in, which is drive letter D. And I can even format it with NTFS. And I can call this my test volume. And I'll do a quick format on this one. Although with 100 megabytes, it's going to go pretty quick anyway. And there is our virtual hard drive. If we were to go back and look at our VHD directory, let's pull that up and see. Here it is. It even says in our autoplay, hey, there's a new drive there. I'm going to open this folder so you can see it. Inside of this computer now, I have a new drive D, my new 100 megabyte file. This is a really nice capability because at this point, I can do things to this drive. You can see it's empty. I don't have any files into this hard disk. I can start loading files into this. I can add operating systems into this view. That's exactly what we're going to do at the command line later on. Now, if we're done with this drive, if we're done with this disk, and we need to now take the disk and copy it to another computer, I can't do that while it's active. So one of the things 
I can do is right mouse click on this disk one and detach it. And it's going to make it unavailable until it's attached again. And by detaching it, it is now removed from the system. And if I go back and I look at my computer, you can see our drive D is completely gone. That's how easy it is from this graphical interface to build a VHD, apply files inside of it. You can then detach it and take that file. And now if we look in our C drive and our VHD directory, there's our test file. I can simply copy that to another computer, and it will have that exact same hard drive. Same idea as removing a physical hard drive from a computer, except now everything's contained in this little file. Now that we've got the basic idea of creating a VHD file and working with it, what I'd like to do now is create the VHD that we're going to use to store our Windows 7 operating system on. And we'll put it right here in this VHD folder that's on this computer. We're going to do all of this from the command line. So I'm going to type CMD, and I'll do a Control, Shift, and Enter to let it know that I would like to have an elevated prompt. Disk part requires that we have an elevated prompt to do these things. Here's our operating system front end. And you can see I'm going to uh, actually go to my VHD directory so that we can see all of the files that are there. There's our test.vhd. And the program that we're going to use to do this is a program called Disk Part. This is a disk partitioning program. And if you do a question mark in here, you can see all of the different prompts and things available to you. Inside of Disk Part, I'm going to use the create vdisk command to create our virtual hard disk. And I'm going to specify a file location of a VHD folder. And inside of that, we'll call this the win7lab2.vhd, since this will be for the second lab inside of our laboratory. Maximum size of the file, if I can type properly there, we'll make it a 20 gigabyte size for the partition for the entire disk, actually. We haven't got any partitions on the disk yet. We're also going to say the type is fixed. It's not going to be that variable size, the dynamic size that builds out as we go. Um, that looks pretty good. We'll hit Enter, and it's going to build out for us that 20 gig hard disk. It takes a few minutes to create the vDisk, but now let's flip over and see what we've got. You can see now we have a win7lab2.vhd, and it is our 20 gig file exactly as we had hoped. If I do a list disk, we could even see that it's not there. We don't have a disk available to us. So I need to select that disk, and then I need to attach it to this computer so that we're able to see it. So let's do that. Let's do a select vDisk. And I can, again, specify the file, which is in my VHD subdirectory. It's my win7lab2.vhd file. We'll hit Enter. And if we do a list disk now, still not there. We still have to do an attach vDisk. And see now when we do a list disk, so now we have this disk available. We can see it in disk part, but it is a absolutely brand new disk. It does not have a partition. We don't have any type of file systems on it. So we need to do those things. So the first thing we need to do is create a partition primary. And it will create a primary partition on this disk. And that's part of the way there. Now we need to put a file system. So let's do a format of our file size equal to NTFS. I like the NTFS file system. I'll make it a quick format. And might as well put a label on it right now. And we'll call that label the win7lab2 disk. And we'll format it. Now it goes through a quick format of that 20 gig. And it has successfully formatted the volume. If we go back to our Explorer, in fact, you could see we aren't quite seeing it yet, though. We haven't been able to see that drive because we don't have a letter associated with it. And I'm going to go back then and put a letter on it. Let's assign a letter to that drive. We'll put a letter J there. And now we'll see the drive J has appeared. So it's those instances that allow us to see the drive is there. It's available. There's nothing in it currently. But now we have that VHD attached. And the next step that we're going to go through is to use ImageX to take an existing Windows image file and apply it into this VHD.
To be able to do this next step, we're going to need ImageX. And ImageX is something that's included in the Windows AIK. If you recall, we loaded the Windows AIK on our Cheyenne server in a previous video. So in that server configuration, there is an imagex.exe file that's stored in the Windows AIK directory under the tools. I simply grabbed that executable and I copied it to this lab computer into the Windows System32 directory so it would be available for us to use. But we could have simply referenced it out on the Cheyenne server as well. I just thought by copying it local, it would be a little bit easier to work with. And since it's just a single executable file, that was very easy to do. You can see I have a directory, a drive that's already mapped to that Cheyenne server. And if you recall, we have a WIM folder out there that has that Win7 Ultimate dash lab file in it. So I've exited out of my disk part. I'm now back at a prompt. And I want to use the ImageX program to get some information about this file that's out in the Z drive in the WIM directory. It's our Win7 Alt dash lab dot WIM file. And you can see a lot of information goes by. If we look at this, I'm going to scroll back to the top so we can see exactly what's here. We have an image index. We've got information here about different file types, different pieces of what's on this particular system. It's a Windows Ultimate client. You can see the image index for this is image index 1. And that's the one that I want to use for this. In fact, there's no other images in that WIM file at all. So that makes it very easy. We'll specify to use that image index of 1 when we build out this into that VHD file. Before we apply this WIM file into this VHD, we need to make sure our VHD is indeed here and attached. And it is. We can see it in Explorer. It has a J drive associated with it. So let's use a command uh, in image X to apply this particular WIM file. And I need to specify the location of the WIM file. It's in Z colon WIM. And it is our Win7 Ultimate dash lab, ultimate dash lab dot WIM. And I'm going to specify that first index on the WIM file and apply it to my J drive and hit Enter. This will take a number of minutes to go through, but it's now going to take everything that's in our WIM file and it's going to put it into that VHD. On my machine, that process took 10 minutes and 49 seconds. But now if we go back up to our J drive, notice now we have all the files in there that we would expect to see for that image. So the process that we went through to move the WIM file into that image appears to work properly. Now what we need to do is detach that particular VHD so that we can then either boot from that in this computer, or we could take that VHD and move it to another computer if we wanted to. We detach it at the command line. We'll go back to disk part. And the command that we'll use inside of disk part is we'll select that VHD again. We'll do a select VDisk, and we'll specify the file for that VHD to be our C colon in our VHD directory. And that's our Win7Lab2 VHD. Now with that selected, we can detach our V disk. And now it has disappeared. In fact, if we look up now, our J drive is completely gone. It's gone missing because we've now detached it from the system. It's gone back to being just another drive on this computer right there. And now we are able to move that file somewhere else, do something else with that if we'd like. What we're going to do now is, since this is already on the computer that we want to use, we'll use BCD Edit to make that a bootable disk that we can see whenever we start up this computer. Let's do that next. We're going to use BCD Edit to modify the boot entries. This is the same as if we were modifying boot entries for a machine where we were doing a traditional dual boot, except in this case, instead of booting from a different partition or a different operating system on the same partition, we're simply booting from a disk that happens to have a virtual hard disk that happens to have an operating system on it. Now, we can only boot to a Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2 VHD. We can't load up Windows 2000 or Windows XP or a different version of Windows 
into a VHD and boot from that. It has to be Windows 7 or the Windows 2008 R2 because those operating systems have been specially built with this VHD booting technology as part of the OS. What we're going to do is use the BCD edit not only to create a new boot entry, we'll change the device and the OS device to point to the VHD, and then we'll make sure that we enable the hardware ab abstraction layer, the HAL, and that allows that, that VHD to be able to see the hardware that's around it. One thing to keep in mind is a couple of limitations when using a VHD as a boot drive. One of those is that our boot drive can't be something that has BitLocker on it. We can't store the VHD on an encrypted volume because then we wouldn't have access to the VHD to boot from. We also can't use or support hibernation with this. Those two technologies are really, really useful in a laptop environment, having your entire hard drive encrypted so that nobody can get access to that if it falls into the wrong hands, and of course the hibernation capability another nice capability for laptops, unfortunately not supported for VHD. So in our case, we're using VHD in a lab environment, in an office environment with a system that isn't portable, so it should be able to support booting from VHD without a problem. BCD Edit is a relatively straightforward program to use. We'll type BCD Edit. It's a command line that we can use right here at our C command line, and I'm going to Make this a little bit bigger so we can see the whole thing here all at once. And now you can see whenever you type BCD edit, we get a description of the Windows Boot Manager. This is where the Boot Manager is getting its information from. If we damage this, the Boot Manager won't know how to boot up your system. So that's a pretty important thing. We're not going to be changing the Boot Manager. We're going to be adding a new bootloader on here to support the VHD file. As you can see, there is an existing bootloader here already. This is the bootloader that starts Windows 7. Because this is the only thing on the system, we don't usually get a prompt when we start this computer. It simply starts up. What we're going to do is copy this bootloader and then make modifications to it. So let's do that. Let's do a BCD edit. And I'm going to edit and specify that I want to copy an existing. And I'm going to specify this identifier right here. This is the current bootloader, the one that we are currently booted into. So I'm going to use this shortcut. Normally, you type in the GUID or the GUID, which is this long, very unique set of characters there. And we're going to do that in a moment. But because this is the current, I can use a shortcut there and just specify current. And I'm going to uh, not only copy that current, I'm going to set a description for this copy. And we'll call this our Windows 7, our Lab 2 boot view. So this bootloader is going to have that. And if I hit Enter, it says, yes, the entry was successfully copied. Here's the GUID of that particular copy. And a BCD edit will show me all of this again. Notice the new bootloader has been put right here at the bottom. It's the Windows 7 Lab 2. There's the description there. And by putting that descriptor in, we can now keep track of these things pretty easily. Because I copied that particular bootloader, notice everything about them is exactly the same. If we booted up our system and chose the Windows 7 Lab 2, it would really be booting the device on partition C and booting our operating system from the partition C exactly the same as if we were up here. So we have to specify now not to boot from the existing operating system. We want to boot from our new VHD file. So I'll use a BCD edit command that we are going to set. Now I need to type in that GUID for the bootloader that I need to specify. Notice it's a big, long set of characters. To type that in manually would be a bit of a problem. So I'm going to mark edit mark here and simply select this entire section. And then if I hit Enter, it puts it in the clipboard. So now all I have to do is perform an edit paste, and it puts that entire GUID there. So a little shortcut for you. And I'm going to specify the device that I'm going to use here, which is essentially going to replace this one that currently is partition equals C colon. I'm going to set up this device to be a VHD. And I'm going to specify, and you have to put your drive letter in these brackets here, to be a VHD, the VHD subdirectory, and it's our win7lab2.vhd. Hit Enter. It says the operation completed successfully. In fact, if I do a BCD edit, you can see that it has indeed changed right up here to be that VHD file. 
Well, now I need to also not only do a device, but I need to set an OS device, which currently is set to partition C colon. That one also needs to be the, the same file. So I'm going to hit my up arrow a couple of times because there's a shortcut. I'll just go over and do an OS device and hit Enter. And it says the operation completed successfully. That's great. Now, the last thing that I need to do is a BCD edit. And I need to do another set with that same GUID. So let's specify. Let's paste this back in. And I'm going to specify that I want to detect the hardware abstraction layer to be on for that particular VHD. Well, that looks good. So let's see what we got, BCD edit. And now you can see we've changed the device. We have changed the OS device. And we've made sure that detect how is set to on uh, or yes right there. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. That sounds good to us. Now, at this point, we should be able to reboot and specify our new VHD as a boot device. Now, when we boot up, our Windows Boot Manager shows us, indeed, under Windows 7, you've got now a Windows 7 and a Windows 7 Lab 2 option. If we choose our Lab 2 option, it's going to use our new VH VHD file and start Windows up normally, just as if it was an actual hard drive that had everything laid out exactly the same as the original. So using these VHDs can be very, very useful. If we want to copy that off, use it on another computer, be able to back that entire hard disk up very, very easily, we simply need to copy that file. It's just that easy now to take advantage of that VHD booting capability that's already coming in Windows 7 Ultimate and Windows 7 Enterprise. As you might imagine, in large environments, you might have many VHDs. You might keep the different VHDs for different reasons, might have different computers that are being used, and have many, many virtual hard disks all over the place. Now, fortunately, Microsoft has thought of this, and there's a Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager. You'll see this abbreviated as the MSC VMM. There's a 2007 version and a 2008 version. And this is a central console that allows you to manage VHDs and virtual machines all at once. If you're running Windows Hyper-V Server, that is the Windows Virtualization Server, where you can have one server set up that's running many servers at once inside of it as virtual devices, which takes it sort of to the next step of what we were doing, where I can have a single server, but inside of that are many tens or even hundreds of little machines running inside of it. You use this Virtual Machine Manager to manage those virtual servers and the virtual hard disks. And you can even do with this uh, functionality. You can do physical to virtual migrations and even manage the workloads between those virtual systems. Quite a comprehensive manager and really necessary if you're doing a lot of virtualization. This also allows you to update maintain your virtual hard disks. So this integrates also with something we talked about earlier, the System Center Configuration Manager or Windows uh, Server Update Services, because you do need to update patches on those particular devices. And you need to make sure that those virtual hard hard disks always have the latest versions of applications on them. Now, normally that VHD file may not even be running on a system, but by using the System Center Configuration Manager and Windows Server Update Services, it can do that to that particular virtual hard disk even if it currently isn't active. So that way you can make sure that when somebody does start up that VHD, that it's going to have the latest patches and the latest information on it. Let's review some of the topics from this module. Our first question is, which command line utility can be used to create a VHD? We did this at our command line. Instead of using the graphical disk manager, we use disk part. Remember, you need to be at an elevated prompt to be able to use disk part to make that VHD file. Our next question is, which utility should you use to configure your computer to boot from a VHD? We use this command line utility to be able to modify some of the boot manager entries. And that is BCD edit that allowed us to do that. And our last question is, which utility allows you to apply a whim to a VHD? We took an existing Windows image file, and we created a VHD and booted from that in this module. And we did that by using the image X and applying that whim image into a VHD file. That covers everything you'll need to know for your exam, where we're dealing with system images, 
creating, deploying, booting, mounting, and updating your VHDs. Also, how to do offline updates and offline servicing as well. That information will be very handy for your 7680 exam. And of course, you can go to our website to watch any of our absolutely free videos. We have online forums there, and you can send me an email as well. Visit our website at professormesser.com.